Hey everybody, welcome to the class. I hope you have a very nice Tuesday and uh, that everything is going well. So it's a pleasure to be here with you in the class. And uh, let's check the attendance first. Well, first of all, Aida Isabel Lopez Bonilla, Ana Veronica Hernandez Rodriguez. Present. Good. Blanca Isabel Tunaca de Rodríguez. Present. Good. Ernesto José Andrade Medina. Present, teacher. Good. Jonathan Ariel Figueroa Rivera. José Alfredo Hueso López. Juan Roberto Velázquez Romero. Present. Good. María Julia Ramos Olivar. Mónica Wendy Ábalos Girón. Oscar Mauricio Rivera González. Present. Good. Oscar René Molina Calidonio. Present. Good. Oseas Figueroa Cisneros. Ramiro Rafael Aguilar Díaz. Roberto Carlos Avilés Rivera. Sandra Yanira Gómez Romero. Silvia Patricia Aceituno Méndez. Verónica Elizabeth Burgos Rivas. Good. Perfect. So, let's check into the class then. So, we're going to start with a little video. And let me just check something. Okay, it's a very short video, so let's see how it goes. As usual, we're going to check what it's about, and then you are going to share with the class, okay? So here we go. Hi, this is James from Fishbowl. This is Whiteboard Wednesday. Today we are going to talk about what are common inventory problems. There are way too many to list, but let's just go over a couple that are very common. Uh, we've got old products sitting on the shelf, whether we're just not using it, it's not shipping out often enough, or we've forgotten about it, it's expired, etc. We have number discrepancies between what's in our book or abacus compared to what's on our shelves. Uh, very big problem, very common, so don't feel alone. Improper log, meaning we're not putting in the in, uh, information that we have about our inventory into that spreadsheet, into our computer, whatever we're using to track all of those things and our processes. Uh, no one knows. Man, this is way too common. You may have a grasp of what's happening in your company, but if your employees don't know where products are, how much they have, how much they're supposed to be coming in, that is a very real problem. Too much stuff. This is kind of similar. All these are kind of very linked together. Oftentimes companies think they need all these products, all these goods, and they don't know what they're ordering. They don't know how much they have on hand at that very moment, or they just keep ordering it thinking eventually it'll sell. You better have a strategy as to what you're trying to do with all that stuff. Uh, or they overskew. This is something where you have maybe one, two products sitting on the shelf with a whole host of numbers and SKUs to incorrectly scan in right next to it. Make sure your stuff's organized. Now with all these, you can really get into some details and should dig into why this may be the case. But the first thing you should probably do is address what is your process? Understand your process behind each one of these. So if you're having discrepancies in your inventory, for example, you should definitely understand is there improper scrapping going on? Are we not receiving enough of an order from a supplier? Are we not shipping out what we've put in our books? If you don't know what's coming in and going out on a day-to-day -day basis, there's a very real problem that needs to be addressed, and it can be done, but you have to start by knowing what is the process behind the problem that you are having at that moment. So, just a few of the problems that you may face, and if it's something where you need automated software solutions, feel free to check out Fishbowl. Lots of features that cover all of these dilemmas, um, and we'll make sure to 
keep addressing more of these things. That's this Whiteboard Wednesday. See you next time. Okay. What did you get from the video? Then? Teacher, teacher, the, the video mentions mentions the common inventory problem. In the in the principal, uh, three problems. Impro in, improper lock, uh, no one knows, and over over skew, but uh, I don't know the meaning is the skew. Okay, very good, perfect. So understanding the process is one of the very most important things, right? Okay, uh, any other opinion? And um, I see the, the new words, the new words in the items. See, improper. Improper, yes. Yeah. Improper. This is incorrecto. It's a new yeah. word for me. Yeah, that is that is good because it's a new vocabulary. Yes. And yeah, all nice. products, as I said, yes, is the I I I know the only eh, no sé no vi las otras palabras. Habían otras abajo, pero empecé a buscar esa porque tenía duda. Yeah, Improper. that is uh, something new. Very good. Pero, the, eh, rem, huh? Improper, pero decía que estaba quebrada una pantalla. It's broken the screen. Broken, yeah. So yes, uh, sometimes what happens is that there are different words for the same thing, right? So uh, very interesting because we can change, right? As I was telling you, sometimes you want to express something, but it's better uh, or uh, it's uh, very nice when you have very many ways to say something, right? Okay, let's check another one. This is uh, again a very short video. Let's see how it goes. Sure. Uh -huh. uh, I, I want I want a, a a question about the the new word the Rene mentions a one mm -hmm. word new word improper mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I don't know the meaning is the over skew. I'm sorry, uh, over over skew. I I I heard some something over skew. The the third the third problem common about the inventory. I don't remember the word. Can you please type it there on the chat? I don't know if I write correctly because I I don't know the 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 common uh, problem uh, is is SQU. Over... SQ. Oh, it, I, I know I know uh, the SQU is the order in the inventory for the property article. Yeah. SQ. Uh, yeah. SQ uh, okay. is identify for the one products in the big, big inventory. It's SQ. Uh, this is the abbreviation. Eh, yeah. SKU, sí, si, es un SKU, es un código de un producto. Exact. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, SAP, thank you. The meaning of that one is SAP. Okay. The meaning of that one is stock keeping unit. So that is the meaning of SKU. And uh, <laughs> yes, as Rene says, that is for, uh, for yeah, for when you want uh, to to have products, uh, for example, you have thousands of products, there is a, a unique number for that item. So that is it. Good. Let me then just go and play the, the video is going to be very short as well. Let's see.
is every around for the organization. The organization is the is uh, is important for uh, como se dice perder uh, luz. Ah, luz. Luz. luz 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 the time se puede decir así yeah to lose time yeah lose time uh -huh. perder tiempo en en buscar algo que no esté organizado yeah actually mm -hmm. the word when you are talking about production is waste waste of time waste of resources waste of mm -hmm. money uh so that is the word for that one i'm gonna type it here on the chat so is waste so um uh, to waste something is that it's like desperdiciar so and it's something that we don't want we waste. don't want to waste time or waste money or waste uh, any other thing uh, Good. Interest, interesting teacher because uh, the five tips to maximize uh, of the warehouse um, for example use driving in containers very good tips types and the second use vertical dividers this is very very important uh, for maximize the space and, and the other in is self and think think about mobile shelving okay so, yes, I mean, these tips are very important. There are just a few, but anyway, we're going to continue checking so, some other details about this. But, yeah, it is something that uh, helps you clarify on many things on what to do or how to do some things, right? So, that is something very, very... Let me just check something. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So uh, let's continue with class. Um, this is what we're going to check. We're going to continue with this part that is about warehouse management, as you may remember. Uh, let's see. Uh, Veronica, could you please help me reading this slide? Yes. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, everybody. Oh, uh, you told me if I can read, yes? Yes, please. Okay, thank you. Warehouse optimization. Optimizing, optimizing your warehouse operation involves fine tuning each of these warehouse management processes. For example, when receive, receiving goods, an organization can label items with model barcodes or attach RFID tags to make them easier to find when picking. During put away, a well managed warehouse operations to store items in the minimum amount of space to maximize the capacity of the warehouse. Other best practices for warehouse optimization include storing popular items in easily accessible areas and separating items that can easily be mistaken for one another. Very good, perfect. So yes, uh, optimization is a very nice word. It's different from maximization. So when you maximize, you want to have the 100% or 120% of efficiency or anything. Like that. But optimizing means that there is a balance. You are going to have the best at a best quality as well. So it says optimizing your warehouse operation involves fine tuning. So do you know what is fine tuning? Fine tuning. So fine tuning is something very nice, something very in good condition, mint condition. So that is fine tuning. 
each of these warehouse management processes. For example, when receiving goods, an organization can label. Do you remember what is label? Label is uh, etiqueta. Etiqueta, very good. Can label items with mobile barcodes. So what is a barcode? Código de barra. Very good. Or attach, what is attach? Anexo. Oh. Anexar, adjuntar. Oh. Very good. RFID is for radio frequency identificator. So uh, in these cases, sometimes you put like a label that is an RFID and you can like, in mind that this is very similar to Bluetooth or a Wi-Fi. So you can locate the package because of the radio frequency. So that is a very, very nice technique. <laughs> Tax, what is a tag? Tax. Tax, the taxes? No. No, tax. It's RFID tax. Etiquetas uh, también. Etiquetas. Very good. To make them easier to find when picking. Do it and put away a well managed warehouse operation stores items in the minimum amount of space to maximize the capacity mm -hmm. of the warehouse. Other best practices for warehouse optimization include storing popular items in easily accessible areas and separating items that can easily be mistaken for one another. What is mistaken? Mistaken. Mistake is error. Equivocándose. Very good. So, yeah, that would be mistakes. Uh, so, if the word is mistaken, that is the past participle of mistake. Very nice. Um, so at the end, uh, there are little things that you can do to optimize the management of the warehouse, like items or tags la, or barcodes, a way <coughs> for you to identify, to scan, to be more efficient. So that is the, the idea. Uh, do you have any question? Is uh, is correct told the the Lexus yesterday is fine tuning. Uh, that is fine tuning. Yes, yeah, something that is top of the art. Okay. Good. Thank Very you. nice. Hey. Okay. Warehouse and management fulfillment strategies. Uh, let's see. Juan Roberto, could you please help me reading this slide? Okay. Warehouse Management Fulfillment Strategy. Selecting fulfillment strategies that match the business's size and the volume and type for of orders it receives can help the organization ship products faster, minimize waste and improve customer satisfaction. Applying picking strategies that match the type of orders that you receive can help maintain the most effective workflow. For example, batch picking is a technique that can help you quickly fulfill multiple orders for, for the same product without wasting time by continually re revised, revised, revising the same inventory <laughs> location. Zone picking assigns pickers to different zones of the SKUs, SKUs for each order Pickers are resp responsible for picking all SKUs from their designated, designated zone. Very good, perfect. So warehouse management fulfillment strategies. So remember the fulfillment is to complete, in this case, orders or sales, or many other things. And it says selecting fulfillment strategies that match the business size is the volume and the volume and type of order it receives can help the organization ship products faster. Minimize waste, uh, that is the word waste, as we discussed. Minimize waste and improve customer satisfaction. Applying picking strategies that match the type of orders that you receive can help maintain the most effective workflow. For example, batch picking is a technique that can help you uh, quickly fulfill multiple orders for the same product without wasting time 
by continually revisiting the same inventory location. So batch picking, anybody knows what is batch picking? Recoger lote. Something like that, very good. So uh, and at the end it says revisiting. Do you know what is revisiting? Revisit. Okay, revisit is when you do something once and again, when you repeat something. So in this case, uh, the meaning is that this technique, the batch picking, is when you uh, oh, so continue using the same space, the same warehouse, the same uh, uh, procedures. So if you continue doing that one, only improving some things, it's going to be faster, it's going to be more efficient. Zone picking assigns pickers to different zones of SKUs. For each order, pickers are resum uh, side for picking the SK uh, that is responsible. Actually, it's, it's not correct. Responsible for all SKUs from their designated zone. So that means that if you have separated that for SKUs that we check that is unique numbers, unique items that you are going to have in the warehouse, it's going to be easier for you to uh, to go and check into those things. I mean, it's going to be easier for you to manage everything inside of the warehouse and uh, do many other things uh, on the movements back and forth. Good, do you have any question? Not for me, teacher. Very good. So let's continue with that one. Uh, Ramiro, could you please help me within this one? Yes, teacher. Completely? Completely? Uh, yes, please. Okay. Uh, first expired, first out. F A F O. Picking ensures perishable mm -hmm. products and item make it. To customer before a specific, a specified expiration or sell by dates. With FAFO, the products set to expire first, first are shipping first. First in, first out, FEFO picking ensures the first product to come into the warehouse are the first to be distrib distributed which can help make sure all the items are shipped before they can become obsolete. Technology is, al technology is also an important part of any warehouse management full fulfillment strategy. Handheld mobile a device the, that display packing list with item location, location Serial number and lot number can help in crazy picking speed and accuracy. Software can recommend the safe and, and cost effective packing based on product dimension to ensure each item gets shipped securely, securely with as li little waste and waste space as possible. Very good, perfect. So uh, these are also strategies about that. So first expire, first out, F-E-F-O, uh, is when uh, this is a method or a strategy that we use for perishable products. So products that we cannot wait, right? We need to move uh, this product very fast, right? Teacher, huh? this is the accountability system. Exactly. Primeras entradas, primeras salidas. Uh, ese es el siguiente, FIFO. Ok. Uh -huh. So, uh, yes, but it's, it's related. Everything is kind of the same strategy, right? So, uh, and I just make it to customer before specify expiration or sell by date. So that means that we need to be careful with the perishable products, right? Uh, with FEFO, the products set to expire first, are shipped first. So in this case, the most important is to know what are the uh, the expiration dates of this product. On the other hand, as Ernesto was saying, is first in, first out. 
Yeah, that is part of the accountability, right? But we can ensure the first product to come into the warehouse are the first to be distributed, which can help make sure all the items are shipped before they can become obsolete. So that is uh, another thing that happens. So it's, uh, uh, it's very common this one because of costs, you prefer to get out the ones that came first. Okay, and it says technology is also an important part of any warehouse management fulfilling strategy. Handheld mobile devices that display packing lists with item locations, serial numbers, and lot numbers can help increase speaking speed and accuracy. So handheld mobile devices, those are like tablets or a software that you can install in the cell phones. So you can then in the cell phone look for the inventory. You will be able to look and check so many things and, and decide what to do. That is the most important part. And uh, some lot, lot numbers. Do you know what is lot numbers? Numerous de lot. So that would be lot numbers. So this is not a lot, but it's only lot. And then it says software can recommend safe and cost effective packing based on product dimensions to ensure each item gets shipped securely with as little waste and wasted space as possible. Nice, very good. Uh, do you have any questions on this slide? Good. Not for me, teacher. Warehouse monitoring and reporting. Uh, Rene Molina, could you please help me with this? Okay. okay. Warehouse moni monitoring and reporting. Measuring and taking cake performance indicators, copy LS, oper operational statistic that indicate how well the warehouse is operating can help pinpoint problems and highlight opportunities to improve efficiently efficiency and fulfill customer order more quickly and accurately <clears throat> for example you can send a target for improved picking and pack, packing accuracy. Accuracy, how much is this, teacher? Accuracy. Accuracy. Accuracy then make change changes to your picking process and measure whether whether those change changes are effective in helping you. Archive, archive your goal. Very good. So where has monitoring and reporting? Those two things are very important to monitor what is going on and to report, right? To create reports and compare. So measuring, what is measured? Do you remember? Mesurado. Uh, medir. Me medir. Medida. Yeah, medida. good. Sure. Measuring and tracking key performance indicator. So KPIs is key performance indicator. So son como métricas. So it's going to be like the ones that are telling you how the business is running. Operational statistics that indicate how well the warehouse is operating can help pinpoint problems and highlight. What is highlight? Do you remember? Highlight. Uh, Alert, no, no son alertas. Luces alta. No, highlight no, es resaltar, ok. Resaltar. Es lo más destacado. O sea, something a destacar. Opportunities to improve efficiency and fulfill customer orders more quickly and accurately. Uh, do you remember what is accurately?
Preciso. Precisamente. Good. For example, you can set a target for improved picking and packing accuracy. Then make changes to your picking processes and measure whether those changes are effective in helping you achieve your goal. So definitely, this is something that we need to do. That's why we need to create and monitor key performance indicator. Uh, everything can be measured, everything. But there are only a few things that are going to tell how the business is run. Teacher, okay. mm -hmm. uh, this uh, measure or tracking is very, very common uh, in the organizations. For example, in my organization, World Vision, uh, have this indicator, different indicators in, in this measuring and tracking key performance indicators. Uh, in Spanish, KPI is uh, very common. Uh, yeah. KPI, no. Keep, KPIs. KPIs, KPIs. Yeah, actually that is something that uh, I believe all the organizations do because they really want to measure. This is to measure uh, how the business is running. Uh, and of course you want to improve certain things, right? So uh, definitely it's something that we can check into that. In, in, my, in my organization, teacher, the, this, uh, uh, this uh, measure is about the colors, for example, uh, is the met is the tracking is in in red it's good but is in yellow is more or less but the the measure or, or tracking uh, are in in red is very very bad okay the yeah color, the but, color measure and actually those are the the common colors right green almost always is nice and red almost always is not good. So you need to do something about that one. So, so those are standards to measure uh, KPIs. Good, let's move on then. So warehouse KPIs, these are like the most common, of course. Uh, warehouse KPIs, let's see. Ana Hernandez, could you please help me reading this slide? Uh, not possible. What about Jose Alfredo? Yes, teacher, yes. Okay, please go ahead and read. Uh, oh, oh. All of it, please, yes. Okay. Warehouse. Yeah. KPIs. KPIs. Okay. Warehouse KPIs. Warehouse manager often that the following KPIs among others. Saving efficiency. 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 The saving efficiency or productivity. Uh, the volume of goods received per warehouse operator operator per hour finger score indicate great receiving efficiency while lower scores indicate that there may be problems that should be invest investigate picking a curry a currency the number of other uh, currently picked divide by the total the total number of order picked, including incorrect or short orders. The closer to uh como se pronuncia cien por ciento one hundred percent. Ah, one hundred percent a currency the better. Order left time. The average time is take for an order to reach a customer when the order has been placed. For the human customer satisfaction, the shorter the leave time, the better. Okay, thank you. Very good. So these are the 
the most common KPIs, right? So warehouse managers often track the following KPIs among others. Do you remember what is among? So when we say among others, it's entre otros, okay? So that's the way that you say that. Receiving efficiency or productivity. So the receiving part is one of the most important. So uh, they need to be careful about that one. And uh, of course, productivity. Productivity means uh, time and quality on how to do things. The volume of goods received per warehouse operator per hour. Higher scores indicate greater receiving efficiency, while lower scores indicate that there may be problems that should be investigated. So at this, uh, on this one, of course, we need to check the volume of products that we receive, okay? So, but not only uh, for the warehouse. So we have to measure that one per operator, per hour, uh, per products, so things like that one. So uh, higher scores indicate that we are very efficient. So if we are very fast and simple, that is good. But if we have lower scores, of course, there are problems that should be investigated. The other one says picking accuracy. Uh, when you pick the products from the warehouse, also that is very important. That's why we need to have technology. We need to have certain tags, certain uh, barcodes, so it's going to be easier for us to check it out. So the number of orders accurately picked divided by the total number of orders picked, including incorrect or short orders. The closer to 100 accuracy, the better. So this is very easy. What you can see there is a formula. So you have, uh, for first of all, uh, how many accurately orders we have, and then the total of orders we have done. And we divide that one, and then if that is closer to 100, it's fine, it's very good. But if it's not, or the farther that is from 100, of course, it's not going to be that. And the last one, it says order lead time. The average time it takes for an order to reach a customer once the order has been placed. Uh, for the highest customer satisfaction, the shorter the lead time, the better. So lead is something very common nowadays for many companies. You say the lead, I want to check the lead. I want to open the lead. There are many leads open. So a lead is like a record, a record that tells you how many orders or what order is still in progress or things like that one. So, um, those three are one of the most important KPIs. Uh, do you have any questions? Okay, good. The next one, let's see. This is a continuation. Monica Avalos, is it possible for you? Not possible. Sandra Gomez? Yes, teacher. Okay, please go ahead. In here. Okay. Rate of product report. I am listening? Yeah, yeah, I listen. Okay, okay. The rate is at which Saki got a return be customer. Calculated be dividing. By dividing. Hello? By dividing. By dividing. The number of eaten return items. is items. Return the number of items sold. By the number. To get items. Okay, the number of items sold. To get a full picture of this KPI, it's important. To consider why products are being returned. A customer accidentally, accidentally, t shirt? Accidentally, yeah. Ordering the word product might not signify 
warehouse operating operation is but there is wrong for improvement is customer often recite incorrect products or demanded goods okay then. okay thank you so rate of product return so this is another KPI that is very important. A rate, whenever you see the word rate, this is a division. So you divide a number by another number and that is a percentage. So that is a rate. So rate of product return. That means that we are going to check, we're going to analyze how many products the customers return to the company. So that is something very good. The rate at which sold goods are returned by customers calculated by dividing the number of items returned by the number of items sold so that is the formula okay uh, to get a full picture of this kpi it's important to consider why products are being returned so that is the most important part if you want to solve this pro uh, problem we need to understand why some products are being returned a customer accidentally ordering the wrong product might not signify. What is signified? Significar. So that would be warehouse operation issues. But there is room for improvement if customers often receive incorrect products or damaged goods. So uh, yeah, we need to check into this. This number is very important. So we improve the processes inside of the warehouse. Sometimes we can improve the, uh, the um, website itself or the place, or how they place order, things like that. So, and the last one says inventory turnover. Uh, that is going to be for, let's see, Mauricio Rivera. Could you please help me reading that? Yes, teacher. Okay. Inventory turnover. How much inventory is sold and replaced in a given period of time? It's calculated by dividing the total cost of goods sold during the period by the average cost of inventory during that period. This KPI reflects reflects how efficiently a warehouse manages manage inventory to meet demand. In general, higher inventory turnover is better. If a, if a warehouse overestimates demand, inventory turnover may be low. Too much low selling inventory can be costly, especially for businesses dealing with goods that have a predetermined shelf life. Very good, Shall perfect I? thing. Uh, so inventory turnover. So the first question here is turnover. What is turnover? Tiempo terminado. Rotación. Rotación, very Rotación. good. That will be turnover. How much inventory is sold and replaced? That is the turnover. So you sold a hundred products. We need to replace those products so we can continue selling products, right? So that is the turnover. In a given period of time, in a given, what is given? In a given period of time, ¿qué entendemos en esa línea? In a given period of time. En un periodo de tiempo determinado. Very good, that is it. It's calculated by dividing the total cost of goods sold during the period by the average cost of inventory during that period. So remember that the, maybe the product is finished, but if you have the product in the warehouse, uh, it's getting more expensive, right? Because you are paying, you are paying for the warehouse, for the lights, for the energy, for the uh, people working there. So uh, all of that makes the product more expensive. So uh, this KPI reflects how efficiently a warehouse manages inventory to meet demand. In general, 
higher inventory turnover is better. If a warehouse overestimates demand, what is overestimate? Sobreestimar. Very good. So if a warehouse overestimates demand, inventory turnover may be low. Too much slow selling inventory can be costly, very expensive, especially for businesses dealing with goods that have a predetermined shelf life. Very good. So do you have any question on this? Shelf life is like uh, the, the life of the product for that to be used. So for example, in mind that we have a lot of cell phones in the warehouse right now. Yeah. Uh, if we have too many, that means that we are going to, or we are going to uh, lose money if we keep those cell phones for one year, for example. One year is too much for the cell phone. So that is going to cause some problems, definitely. Uh, any questions here? No, for me, teacher. Good, amazing. So statistics, warehouse management statistics. Ernesto, help me with this one. Okay, teacher. Warehouse management statistics. Global e-commerce has grown rapidly in recent years and is expected to top uh, 29 trillion by 2023 accelerating a need for more warehouse space to match growing cons cost consumers' demands. E-commerce growth is expected to increase uh, demands for U.S. warehouse space by 1 billion square feet by 2025. It's not surprising that one sur survey by trade publications logistics management found 79% of warehouse operations were planning some type of expansion ex, expansion, time, expansion expansion plan. Given this growth, a top challenge faced by, by warehouse operations is the inability to attract and retain a qualified hourly workforce. To improve product, productivity, productivity, reduce operating costs, and keep up with customers' demand, all while combating tight space in a tight labor market, warehouse operations are increase, increasingly using technology to automate processes, with 85% using WMS according to the logistic management survey. Very good, perfect, thank you. So it says warehouse management statistics. What is statistics, do you remember? Estadística. Very good, that is it. So global e-commerce has grown rapidly in recent years and is expected to top 29 trillion in my end that one, 29 trillion of people selling goods. Teacher, how how many zeros has a trillion? Oh my goodness, I guess it's nine, well, nine or 12, well, I guess. 12. Yeah, 12, right. So that's a lot of money, my <laughs> It's so, million of million. Um, <laughs> yeah, that is three times. I can, right? I can imagine. <laughs> yes, a lot, a lot. So that's why this business is is very popular nowadays, right? Mm -hmm. E-commerce. Okay, and then it says accelerating a need for more warehouse space to match growing consumer demand. So that means that if if the e-commerce is growing, the companies are going to need more warehousing, right? They need to have more space for products, more transportation, more of everything. So that is a, a big problem here. Uh, and then it says e-commerce growth is expected to increase 
demands for U.S. warehouse space by 1 billion square feet. So I mind how, how much space is that one? Uh, what is square feet? Do you remember? Pie cuadrado. Very good. So that is the English metrical system, right? So uh, that is a lot of space. And it's not surprising that one survey, what is survey? Survey encuesta. Very good. So it's not surprising that one survey by trade publication logistics management found 79% of warehouse operations were planning some type of expansion. So that happens, right? So companies, they want to expand themselves. Of course, there are crises. For example, this year, Amazon and many other companies, they have a crisis, so they have to decrease. But that is a moment, a year, two years, then we continue growing. And then it says, giving this growth, a top challenge faced by warehouse operation is the inability. What is inability? Inhabilitar. Very good. To attract and retain a qualified hourly workforce. Ah, that is very important. People that work, they are very, very important in this part. To improve productivity, reduce operating costs, and keep up with customer demand, all while combating tight. Do you remember what is tight? Tight is como apretado, algo muy justo. Okay, tight space and a tight labor market. So we are not going to have that much space, and we are not going to have that many people. It's going to be difficult, right? Warehouse operations are increasingly using technology to automate processes with 85% using... Do you remember what is a WMS? Warehouse Management Studies. Uh, well, uh, what, yeah, very good. But it's... Uh, yeah, it's System? going to be very important. System, yeah. Uh, system, excuse me, warehouse management system. Very nice, but that is yes, it. Yes, uh, for automation and uh, follow all the all the process uh, in a uh, software. Very good. That is it. So, uh, definitely. So, uh, according to these statistics, in mind, everything is going to grow. So we need to be ready, right? Because we need to be efficient. We need to be fast. We need to manage everything inside of the warehouse the best that we can. Good. Do you have any questions on this slide? Teacher, the first phrase in the second paragraph, for example, uh, a top challenge faced. What is the meaning in Spanish? Un reto, un mayor o de los más grandes retos que se enfrenta o que enfrenta las operaciones de bodega. Enfrenta is, is, is faced. Faced, yeah. Okay, thank you. Very good. Nice. So, a lot of things may be happening, right? Let's see what happens with the next slide. Uh, Silvia, Patricia, will you please help me reading this? Okay. Choosing a warehouse management system. Choosing the right uh, WMS will depend on the specific of your warehousing operation and what, what you want to achieve. Above all, the right WMS to help your organization achieve better efficiency and fulfill orders more accurately so you can do more at a lower cost. Science, a primary Since. goal is to save money. Since, pre since a primary goal is to save money. R O I is K. Additionally, a uh, WMS should act as a, 
aside the guy to help our warehouse staff become more efficient in the workplace. To do so, the right WMS will provide real time actionable insights into each aspect of your warehousing operation to help staff be more efficient and programmatic, including receiving, shipping, inventory, order, fulfillment, and labor, while providing easy to understand statistics and reports that the manager and worker can easily, easily understand and then use to improve daily and long-term processes. Uh, WMS should also be scalable so it can help your business grow and adapt to changing market conditions. The right WMS can take your warehouse operation to a higher, higher level of efficiency, efficiency speed and order accuracy, helping to improve your company's competitiveness and increase customer satisfaction while keeping op operating costs down. Okay, thank you very much. So, choosing a warehouse management system. So, we have discussed how important it is to have a very good a warehouse management system, but how to choose the correct for you. So choosing the right WMS will depend on the specifics of your warehousing operation and what you want to achieve. So it depends on your needs. Above all, what is above all? Sobre todo. Sobre todo, very good. The right WMS should help your organization achieve greater efficiency and fulfill orders more accurately so you can do more at a lower cost. Since a primary goal is to save money, ROI is the key. Do you know what is ROI? Return of in, um, inversion. In investment. Investment, excuse me. Yeah, that would be ROI. It's the is the key. So that is a rate that you do, right? Additionally, a WMS should act as a guide to help a warehouse, all warehouse staff become more efficient in the workplace. To do so, the right WMS will provide real-time actionable insights. What is insights? Dentro. Very good. Something from the inside, right? Yes. So it's like internal. Very good. And then it says, into each aspect of your warehousing operation to help staff be more efficient and programmatic, including receiving, shipping, inventory, order fulfillment, and labor, uh, while providing easy to understand statistics and reports that managers and workers can easily understand and then use to improve uh, daily and long-term process. What is long-term? Un termino, termino largo. A largo plazo, very good. A largo plazo. So a WMS should also be scalable. Uh, do you remember what is scalable? Escalable. Escalable. Algo que pueda subir, que pueda aumentar. So it can help your business grow and adapt to changing market conditions. The right WMS can take your warehouse operations to a higher level of efficiency, speed, and order accuracy, helping to improve your company's competitiveness and increase customer satisfaction while keeping operation and operating costs down. Very good. Um, do you have any questions here?
Okay. Let's move on. Oh, that's it. Very good. Okay. So let's start with the book. Oh, what is it? It's this one? Okay. So unit three, warehouse. And it says, I will be able to describe the fundamentals of warehouse management. And it says, what will happen if uh, the warehouse of a very busy company reaches its maximum capacity? What do you think can happen in that situation? It's very dangerous. Uh, the probably uh, collapse, uh, collapsar, no sé. Collapse, yeah. Collapse. Yeah, I mean, if that happens, the company is not longer to operate, right? Teacher, mm -hmm. in the in the future, in the time, uh, a company uh, should think about the cap capacity of the warehouse uh, because this question is is possible that um the maximum capacity is is because the company is increased okay. i don't know yeah that is true i mean when the companies they want to they increase they, they increase the operation sales and many other things and they also have to think about the warehousing, right? And that's why, do you remember that? Right now we're speaking about warehousing. That is the opposite of the 3PL. So in warehouse, in the company, you have your warehouse and you manage everything. When you have a 3PL, you don't care. I mean, you pay other companies so they can handle those little things. It's more expensive, but it's more convenient, right? It's so, a, hmm? a World Vision have a warehouse in Nehapa uh, because uh, our office received donations, uh, toys, um, tables, shirts, uh, whatever the, 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 the things, uh, donations. But each, each three or two months, uh, the um, the chief of the warehouse in Nehapa uh, told us uh, move the donations uh, to to find uh, the benefits uh, because uh, in the other three or or six months uh, give the other donations to so the rotation is very very important. That is very important. Yeah, you have to have the space whenever it's, it's needed, right? So it's one of the most important things. So in my, uh, the logistics on that part, right? So companies investing a lot of money. And yes, maybe, um, uh, maybe it's uh, more expensive for a company have a warehouse, uh, uh, but it's a, uh, the the risk is uh, the other person the other company uh is uh, this um, expensive uh, delayed in other another uh, question i i think okay yeah actually it's true uh yeah everything has a risk right everything is expensive so you need to decide what is the best for your company what is the, the best solution depending on your need? Uh, what are you planning to do right now in the future? So it's a very interesting thing. And it's not easy, as we were discussing. Okay, uh, the other question says, how would avoid overcrowding in a warehouse? What is overcrowding? Llenar lo demás o hacinamiento. Very good. So how would you avoid overcrowding in a warehouse? Hey, the 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 second the second video in in this in this class teacher mentions about it for the five types to maximize of the warehouse. For example, use rowing in the con in containers and 
think about the mobile shelving and use vertical dividers. Yeah, all those are very good tips. So you have a very efficient warehouse uh, process, right? So, and uh, well, even to study this is a little complex at times. In mind, do it. Do it is is another thing. Right? So, okay, let's go and do the conversation. Uh, it says Rose and Matt are discussing storage problems they are facing at the warehouse where they hold their shipments. Read and practice the conversation. So I'm going to read, you check the pronunciation and you practice, and then we check some vocabulary. Sir, we just received a call from the warehouse. The last shipment arrived today, and it seems they don't have more space to store our products. That is a very expensive shipment. Our products will get damaged if they are left lying anywhere. Can they arrange for the transportation of this shipment to a different warehouse? Yes, sir. They asked if we had some other warehouse we could use. I will get the documents ready to outsource the shipment to a temporary warehouse. This costly, but the products come first. Do you have any pronunciation question? Yes, teacher. Um, <clears throat> in the first math paragraph, uh, in the math paragraph, I don't know. I lose the, the word. Okay, think about it. Li Check it out. Lying, lying teacher. Lying. For example, uh, if they are left lying, what lying. is the lying? Lying. Uh, Yacer, estar puestos ahí. Ok. Ok. Any other pronunciation questions? Excuse me, teacher. Line, eh, eh, what mean? Estar, yacer, estar puesto en alguna parte. Uh -huh, ok, ok. Uh, but the uh, uh, literary is a uh, Mentir, uh, lying, man. Uh, that is another word. It's very similar, but it's different. <laughs> yo, yo so pensaba, ajá, yo pensaba que era como mintiendo. <laughs> yeah, but no, yes. no, it's, it's not that. It's, it's very dejarlo, similar. Dejarlo, uh, de, decir, dejarlo en cualquier parte. Exacto. Así como decimos nosotros, lo dejamos allá en cualquier parte. That Abandonado. is lying. Mm -hmm. Lying anywhere. Uh -huh. Thank you. You're welcome. Excuse me, hey. teacher. Uh -huh. Themes. What does it mean? Uh, what is the word themes you say? Themes. The last shipment arrival. I and it seems. Ah, uh, it seems. They don't have more space. Theming. Parece ser que no tiene más espacio. Al parecer no tienen más espacio. Parecer. Okay. Uh, it seems. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other question? Okay, let's practice them. Let's start with Ernesto and Ramiro. Okay, Ernesto. I okay, am Rose. Okay, Ramiro. Okay, go ahead. Ramiro. Sir, we just received, received a call for the warehouse. The last shipment arrived today and it seems it seems they don't have more space to store our products. That is a very expensive shipment. Our products will get damaged if they are left lying anywhere. Can they arrange for the transportation of this shipment to a different warehouse? Yes, sir. They asked if we have some other warehouse we call use. I will get the documents uh, ready to 
outsource this shipment to a temporal warehouse. It is costly, but the products come first. Very Thank good, you. perfect. So, Sandra, Rubens, and Juan Roberto. Okay. I am Raul, Juan Roberto. Okay. Dear, we just received recite a call from the warehouse. The last shipment arrived today, and it seems they don't have more space to store our product. That is a very expensive shipment. Our products will get damaged if they are left lying anywhere. Can they arrange for the transportation of this shipment to a different warehouse? Yes, sir. They ask if we have some or a warehouse we call use. I will get the documents re ready to outsource this shipment to a temporal warehouse. It is costly, but the products come first. Very good, perfect. Thank you. Now, Rene Molina and Veronica Elizabeth. Okay. Uh, I don't know if Go ahead, happened. Veronica. Is it possible for you, Veronica? Is that possible? Yeah, not possible. What about Jose Alfredo? What's Tequila, Johnny <laughs> Walker. Yeah. Anna Hernandez, is it possible for you? No, it's possible. I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan Ariel. Not possible. Miss Universo, nada. <laughs> Monica Avalos. Universe. Uh, Roberto Carlos. Okay, Roberto, go, go ahead. No, not possible. Silvia Patricia. Silvia Patricia. Yes. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I'm Matt. You, Rose. Yeah. Which on the aside to to end. I don't know. Listen, I don't under understand. Yeah, there are some uh, it's a problem. It's a problem. Urge Starlink. <laughs> Me, teacher. Host. Aguinaldo, Aguinaldo is a uh, Starlink, please. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. ¿Quién dijo yo de ahí? Ana Verónica. Sí, Ana. sí uh, we just received a call okay. from the Gonzales. The last shipment arrived today and it seems they don't have more space to store our products. Okay. That is very expensive shipment. Our products will get damaged if they are left live. Lying. Lying. Anywhere can they arrange for the transportation of the shipment to a different warehouse? Yes, sir. They asked if they if we have some other warehouse we call use. I will get document ready ready to outsource this shipment to a temporary warehouse. It is a costly, but the product products come first. Very good, perfect. Thank you both. And uh, Mauricio Rivera, is it possible for you? Aida Lopez, is it possible for you? Yes, sir. Can you oh. listen to me? Yes, yes. Aida and let's see. I don't know. Blanca is possible. Yes. Okay. Aida and Blanca. 
Okay, uh, Blanca, if you want, I can tell. Okay, I am Rose. Uh, are you Rose? Okay. Sir, we just received a call from the warehouse. The last shipment arrived today and it seems they don't have more space to store our products. That is a very expensive shipment. Our products will get damaged if they are left lying anywhere. Can they arrange for the transportation of this shipment to a different warehouse? Yes, sir. They expect if we have some other warehouse we could use. I will get the documents ready to outsourcing this shipment to a temporal warehouse. It is costly, but the problem comes first. Very good, perfect, thank you. Okay, so let's see some words. Uh, uh, do you remember what is shipment? Embarque. Very good. Uh, bueno, ya vimos esta. Parece, parecerá. Sí. What is damaged? Dañarse. Good. Dañado. Ya vimos esta que es dejar dejarlo en cualquier parte. Good. Uh, what else? I don't see any other. Do you have any other question? Okay, so now we're going to do the exercise three. Uh, answer the questions according to the conversation. So I will give you a few minutes for you to check into that one, okay?
Okay, so let's check. Uh, what happened to Matt's current warehouse? Don't have more space to store. Very bad. Product. Yeah, that is not good. They don't have more space. Not good, right? And then uh, the next question says, what could happen to the shipment if it is not carefully stored? Is uh, It will get damaged. Very good. It will get damaged. And then what does Matt do about the problem? Shipment to a temporal warehouse. Very good. So it's going to be at source, right? To a temporal uh, warehouse. So that is another solution. So if you have a problem, you can always get another warehouse, an external one. Of course, that is more expensive. Right? So, um, but you cannot do anything sometimes about these kind of things. Very nice. So, Let's go to the next one. Building vocabulary says, read the definitions below and match the examples to the corresponding term. So uh, these are the, the definitions and here are like the ones that you need to match. So I'm going to give you a few minutes for you to move those into that one, okay? Okay, teacher.
Okay, so let's check my friends. Uh, it says letter A. Uh, warehouse management is the control of the day-to-day -day operations of a warehouse, such as shipping, receiving, put away, and picking of goods. Is it the same as stock control? Stock control is a way to maximize profit by getting inventory right. And warehouse management is a way to maximize the efficiency and effectiveness of warehouse operations. So those are the letter A and the B. So, and the next chart says, it tells you where the items are in and the order in which they need to be picked. What is that? B. For me, teacher. Which one, I'm sorry? No, Ramiro said the 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 first line is little, little B, is correct, ah, Ramiro. Okay. Letter B, everybody agrees on that? I, I don't know, teacher. I, I have a dude. Okay. Because I, I, bel I think that the first line, it tells you where the items are in the order in which they need to be picked. For me, it's a little A, warehouse, warehouse management, but I don't know. Mm, I don't okay. Know. Yeah, you're right. A little A, right? Yes, yes, uh, Ernesto uh, is right. It's A. Very good. And the other one says it means you Thank know you. how many of particular products you have and when to order. Definitely. So it's A and B. That will be the uh, correct. Nice. I don't see any new word here. So yeah, let's move on. So it says building vocabulary. The following are basic types of warehouse match the type of warehousing to its definition. So I will give you a few minutes just to check into that one, okay? It's not in order, it seems that it's not in order. I don't know. So uh, check into that one and then we're going to compare.
Okay, so the first one it says holding warehouse. What do you think is that? Teacher, uh, for me, the, the holding warehouse is the traditional warehouse was a space in use for temporal and long-term storage. Mm, okay, everybody agrees on that? Okay, so what about distribution center? What will be that? the distribution center teacher is possible the last one concept it serves larger larger regions and goods are st stored shorter time most of it is used for picking and consolidation orders very good that is the one so a uh, cross docking center is going to be it can be named a terminal or sorting center, the focus is only on receiving and shipping activities with little to no storage. Teacher, mm -hmm. I have a question. Uh, the cross docking center, what is the meaning in Spanish? Uh, the meaning is exactly what you said there. The cross docking center is traditional word. I uh, know. Uh, yeah, but it's going to be like un centro donde se recibe, solo se recibe y se importa algo. So it's not a distribution center. Ah, okay, okay. This that is a be. temporary. I mean, it's not temporary, but it's something like uh, you, uh, it's set only like a port. It's like a hub where you okay. get something and then redistribute the, the rest to other departments or other warehouses. Okay. Good, Thank good. Uh, we're not going to do that yet, but we have a few minutes, so we're going to do free practice today. Yeah. So, uh, sometimes uh, we need to be ready for uh, going to interviews in, in English. And there are some questions that are very common. For example, in mind that I say to Juan Roberto, Juan Roberto, tell me about yourself. What would you say? Mm, uh, please uh, repeat. Yeah, imagine that you are in an interview, job interview, and the person that is interviewing you says, uh, tell me about yourself. Mm, okay, in this case, I need to talk some, talk about my skills in, in, in the, for the job, maybe? Exactly, that is it. So you can speak about your skills, uh, the experience that you have and uh, your your career, what did you study, things like that. Those three things are very, very important when somebody asks you that. Um, let's say, if I ask, let's see who's. Monica, are you here? She's in Olo Puerta getting proposals, maybe. So, uh, let's see who else is. Uh, Aida Lopez. Hello. Hello, how are you? Um, I'm tired. <laughs> Me right too. Now. And it's only Tuesday, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> yeah, oh, yes. Okay, Imagine so the rest of the week. Yeah, yeah, for Fridays, I don't know if you have seen it, but sometimes on Friday, I'm, yes, of course, because I'm very tired, all right? But it's it's very nice. It's very nice to be here with you. So that's why I never quit. So, and um, imagine that you are in an interview, a job interview, and the other person says, mm -hmm. "What are your what are your weaknesses 
and strengths? Oh, um, this question is really hard at the moment to explain by me, but I'm going to try, okay? Okay. Okay, my witness, is the correct pronunciation? Witness, yeah. Yes? Yeah. Okay. Is, um, I like to talk about the different things with the person, with another person. Uh, but in the case of the, okay, but. We cannot hear you, Juliana. Yeah, not at all. Um, I'm sorry. I have the problem with my computer or my okay. cell phone with my internet. I'm not sure about. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, I'm going to try continue. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, as I told you, my I guess my weird weirdness is that I like to to speak a lot. Okay, I speak a lot with different uh, people. But um, on the other hand, is it's a good idea to be um this way because you okay in my case I can learn about different for example cultures. Uh, different um, situations or, um, or, 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 or. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Okay, but um, I guess that is a, a, a strengthened as well. Okay, because it is, it is important to learn about different, um, for example, pronunciation in English. Uh, solving different problems in the job, uh, something like that. Okay, okay. very good. <laughs> uh, it was very Be good. Honest, I mean, please. No, I mean, it was good because, I mean, you didn't expect that. One. I mean, when you go to an interview, a real interview, you are ready, right? You think about uh, possible questions and possible answers. Uh, but in this situation, I mean, you didn't know that I was going to ask you that one. So, it was very good. Uh, so you say that you are very talkative. Um, when you say that you talk a lot, what do you mean? I mean, do you speak about anything to everybody? Uh, sí, es que, o sea, that is my problem. <laughs> Soy bien, eh, o sea, no sé cómo decir, pero hablantina, vaya, algo así, que, que, okay. que soy bien habladora. <risa> o sea, right. ese es un problema pero, o sea, como trato de disfrazarlo ¿vale? que fuera una fortaleza es que siendo así o sea, he aprendido mucho, la verdad es, así que es como que una debilidad, sí, porque como que hablo mucho ¿vale? pero es <risa> la fortaleza es que aprendo por ser así, digo yo, ¿vale? no sé si eso <risa> sea correcto tiche. Yeah, actually yes, I believe I believe that depends on of the of the of the position that you are applying, right? So depending on that, is that you are going to think about a uh, different different answers for that question? Because maybe the question is going to be: imagine that you are going to be a director, uh, or if you are going to be uh, an analyst, depending depending on of what is going to be the purpose of the interview. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. Okay. Uh, another one, um, for example, is what are your goals? Or uh, why should I hire you? That is very common. So in mind that we are, we're speaking about warehousing, right? In mind that you are applying for manager, warehouse manager. So, uh, Ramiro, if I said, why should, uh, why should I hire you? as warehouse money, what would you say? I I say the warehouse manager is um, the, 
the best warehouse manager is the uh, pendant of the uh, all the people is uh, making your job and checking with all the procedures uh, have a have a depending the 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 products uh, uh, to the entrance or the deliveries is very important okay very good so yes uh if somebody asks you what should i hire you what you are going to try to do is to tell reasons right i have the experience i know how to do this i enjoy uh, the numbers or moving I, I for example one keyword if you want to apply for um uh, warehouse manager is that you are organized i believe that that is a very important skill if you want to apply for this position or uh, you're right yeah yeah that is something i mean if you are not organized of course and and uh, that you like to do reports that you like to work with people because you are going to have a team that is going to move many things. So depending on the position, you can think about what will be the answer for the position, right? Of course, telling the truth, right? Uh, let's see, another question. Uh, how do you handle stress? This is for everybody. What do you do when you are stressed out? Um, for me, teacher, um, play football soccer in the sun, in the Sundays, and listen to music, uh, relaxing moment. For example, watch TV, a, a movie or series. In the other moment, teacher, very very relaxed moment. I read a very good book for me. For example, about the leadership. Okay, very good. So very nice that you are able to identify what helps for for example for me definitely listen to music is one of the most important or a play music that is also very important sometimes to go out you are stressed out and if you go out for a walk or something like that is something good any other opinion what do you do when you are stressed out anybody else hello teacher hello um Okay, um, when I fall versus I get, I, I gonna out, out the stress, uh, I go to dancing and I go, I watch a song movie too, and I go to meeting with my friends. Very <laughs> he, good. He drinks something and, and Oh, speak very, very tense. Okay, nice. Loving everybody, everything. <laughs> okay. And when you say that you go dancing, I mean, do you dance in your house or do you go to a discotheque? Yes. yes. Sometimes I go to discotheque, some party, or a few months. Um, after I I going I went to uh, dance school, uh, but uh, maybe one month ago I and I I'm not going to my my dance school because I have so much to work and then I have to go to this Okay, yeah, I that's. I uh... have to. <laughs> so that's a must. You need to do that. Okay. Very good. That is another thing that, yeah, definitely you can do because doing some exercise and dancing is a very nice exercise. Uh, I, forgot, it, it, uh, I forgot the working for, I forgot the problems. I forgot if I feel sick, I forgot when I dance. I don't know why. But that's good for me. That's good for very, me. Very good. Interesting. So. You can see that we are very different. Right? Everybody's different and we have different okay. ways of handling stress. The important part is that we understand uh, what we can do. Any other example, any other opinion? Of what do you do when you are stressed out?
No variations. Um, how do you describe yourself? That is another question that anybody can ask you in a interview, right? So, of course, you need to avoid certain things. I mean, you cannot say, I'm very angry with people. Uh, if you say that, probably you are going to get the job, right? And if you are very angry with people, then you have to work with them in real life, right? But you cannot tell that. Um, so let's say I'm going to ask uh, Sandra Gomez. Mm, not here. Uh, eh, who else is? I don't know. Who wants to answer that one? Um, how do you describe yourself? Me, teacher. Okay. okay. I consider myself um, an easygoing person because I have the opportunity to, uh, I don't know how to say, tratar try. with different people. Try. Oh. oh, that yeah. is treat. Treat different people. No. Okay. Treat or no different different people in my life. Uh, I like um, to have different contact with the person as well. Uh, I um, it's for that reason that I consider uh, myself an easygoing person. Okay, because I can adapt them uh, with different moods in my job, for example. And okay, that's all. Very good, perfect. Thank you. So that uh, is something uh, that you need to be ready to answer. Right? Whenever somebody asks you how would you describe yourself, you need to have very good attitudes to describe yourself and tell uh, the other person that you are the person for the job. Very good. All right, my friends, let's check the attendance and let's go to bed. Let's see. Aida Isabel Lopez Bonilla. I'm here. Good. Ana Veronica Hernandez Rodriguez. Present. Good. Blanca Isabel Tunaca Rodriguez. Present. Good. Ernesto José Andrade Medina. Present teacher. Good. Jonathan Ariel Figueroa Rivera. Present. Good. José Alfredo Hueso López. Present teacher. Good. Juan Roberto Velázquez Romero. Present. Good. María Julia Ramos Olivar. Present. Good. Mónica Wendy Ábalos Girón. Good. Oscar Mauricio Rivera González. Present. Good. Oscar René Molina Calidoni. Osea Figueroa Cisneros. Ramiro Rafael Aguilar Díaz. Present teacher. Okay. Roberto Carlos Avilés Rivera. Good. Sandra Janira Gómez Romero. Here, teacher. Good. Silvia Patricia Aceituno Méndez. Verónica Elizabeth Burgos Rivas. Very good. Okay, my friends, it was amazing to be here with you. Have a very good night. Rest very well. See you tomorrow and dream in English. See you tomorrow, yeah. teacher. Have a nice See night. See you tomorrow, everybody. Good evening. Good night, sir. Good night. Good night. Good night. Hello, Renee.